Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with an Italian meatball-inspired prison-style meatloaf. That's right, you know that old saying, if you can't do the time and you don't like meatloaf with a lot of filler, don't do the crime? Well, that comes from the fact that large institutions like this that have what we'll call a captive audience tend to use a lot of filler and bulking products in a meatloaf. And while saving money and crushing souls is the main reason they do it, it does actually produce a meatloaf that's very juicy and incredibly tender. So every once in a while, I do enjoy making a meatloaf in this style. And here's how we're going to put it together. So in a saute pan on a medium high heat, I'm going to melt some butter and a little bit of olive oil. And once that butter melts, we're going to dump in some diced onions with a big pinch of salt. And we're going to saute those, stirring occasionally, until they're kind of golden brown. And we're definitely going to want to do this step first, because this mixture will need to cool before it goes into the meat. So anyway, let's go ahead and saute those onions until nice and golden. And at that point, we're going to go ahead and dump in our finely minced garlic. I got about four cloves. And we're not even going to really cook this, we're just going to stir it in. And as soon as it is mixed in, all we'll do is turn off the heat and let that sit on the stove until it cools down to room temperature. So our onions are all set, and it's on to another step we want to do ahead of time, the soaking of the breadcrumbs. And it's these crumbs right here, in particular the amount of crumbs, that makes this what I'm calling a prison-style meatloaf. So I'm basically going to use twice as much breadcrumb as what would normally be called for in a modern meatloaf recipe. And I made these myself, but any plain, very dry white breadcrumb will work. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pour over milk and soak these breadcrumbs for about 15 or 20 minutes to make what I've always called a slurry, although I'm not sure if that's technically correct, but basically what we're gonna do is mix that up and let it sit there for about 15 or 20 minutes till it absorbs all the milk. And don't be in a hurry. See, after about 10 minutes, they look like this, and you may think, hey, that looks soaked. We're good to go. But they're not. You'll see, in another 10 or 15 minutes, they're gonna look like that. See how those have swollen up? So that's what you wanna wait for. And once we have our onion mixture cooled and our breadcrumbs soaked in milk, we are ready to proceed with the rest of the mixture. So in a bowl, I have two pounds of ground beef. I like to use chuck. I like the 85 to 15 lean to fat blend, but 80-20 will also work beautifully. And we'll go ahead and season up this meat with some salt and some freshly ground black pepper. And then let's go ahead and also give it a little shot of cayenne. That's gonna provide some beautiful caged heat. We're also gonna go ahead and dump in a couple beaten eggs, along with some freshly chopped Italian parsley, and also a nice handful of freshly grated Reggiano Parmesan. And you know of all the things I would have trouble getting adjusted to in prison life, besides of course the constant physical assaults, it would be getting used to eating fake Parmesan cheese. I mean, talk about cruel and unusual. But anyway, we're going to dump in some Parmesan. And we'll also go ahead and add our now-cooled onion mixture. And then last but not least, we're going to go ahead and add our breadcrumbs. But before we do, I want you to go ahead and grab a handful and squeeze out any excess milk. All right, we want these crumbs damp, but we don't want them dripping wet. And you're not going to squeeze a lot of milk out. But like I said, squeeze out what you can. And then we'll add the crumbs to the mixture. And then we'll go ahead and take a spatula and mix that entire thing together thoroughly. And of course, the reason we're using moist soaked crumbs is because dry crumbs pull moisture away from the meat. But if we use moist crumbs, that doesn't happen. So you end up with a much moister, much more tender product. And as it starts to come together, you can really see how much filler we have in here. All right, by the time we're done, this meatloaf's only going to be basically half meat, which is great news for you people that enjoy America's fast food chains. So we're going to keep mixing until it looks like that at which point we're going to transfer that into a lightly greased baking dish. All right, use something nice and large, a couple inches deep is perfect. And then what you're going to do is you're going to wet your hands and form this into the classic loaf shape. So I think about four or five inches across is perfect and about three inches high or so. And by the way, a cake might be fine to hide a small little file in, but with the size and shape of this thing, you could totally hide a hacksaw, allegedly. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and manipulate that meat mixture into an appropriately shaped loaf. And then if you want, you could bake it just like that. But personally, I do like to glaze my meatloafs and or cook them in sauce. And because I am doing a meatball-inspired version, I decided to go with a tomato sauce. And the reason it's that color is because I added some balsamic vinegar, which I thought would be totally amazing, which was totally not amazing. But I'll talk about that in the blog post. I'm going to recommend you just use your favorite tomato sauce. But anyway, I ladled that into my dish, as well as over the top. And in addition to flavor and color, it's also going to make for a beautifully moist cooking environment, which always works when baking meatloaf. And once we've covered that surface in the sauce, we're going to go ahead and transfer that into the center of a 325 degree oven for about an hour and 10 minutes or until we reach an internal temperature of about 155. All right, one of the few ways to screw up a meatloaf is to overcook it. So check with a thermometer if you can. And after about an hour and 10 minutes, mine look like this. But anyway, once you pull your meatloaf out, you should probably let it sit there at least 10 minutes before you slice into it. And if you don't, I'm going to hear about it. Oh, someone will drop a dime on you. So let it rest a little bit. 
And then we're going to go ahead and slice in and start to analyze this alternative and I think fascinating version of meatloaf. Now normally I would slice this with my shiv, but it was in the dishwasher. So I'm just going to use a regular knife. And other than the fact I didn't like the balsamic vinegar in the sauce I used, this was absolutely delicious and very, very meatball-like. And in addition to the extreme tenderness, it's also going to remain incredibly juicy. I mean, look at that. I mean, is that not the juiciest meatloaf you've ever seen? So anyway, let's go ahead and cut a proper slice. Even though the flavors were kind of an Italian meatball theme, I still went with some mashed potatoes. And I also served it with a little bit of arugula. But I really think any kind of tossed salad would work here. And even though I wasn't crazy about my particular sauce, I decided to go ahead and garnish with it anyway. You know, for the sake of the pictures. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling prison style meatloaf. Like I said, every once in a while, I do like to use this method. If made properly, my meatloaf should bring all the boys from the yard and they'll be like, it's better than mine. And if you do give it a go, I think you'll find it guilty of being fantastic. So I really do hope you give it a try and hope you continue to enjoy it for at least 25 years to life. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.